Welcome back to Two Dudes One Garage. So uh, today is uh, October fifth, twenty twenty two. I'm gonna go through the coin market cap uh, top ten coins. Um, some of them aren't really necessary coins or uh, tethered coins or stable coins, yeah. so I won't mention those. But I'll just go start off with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, twenty thousand three hundred eighty. Um, it's in a green today. Uh, Ethereum's uh, one thousand three hundred seventy five. It's also in a green by two percent. And then uh, we have BNB uh, Finance. Uh, it's at $296, also in the green. There's a lot of stuff in the green today. Yeah, it, Bitcoin is just like an 18 recently, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's it moving up a little bit. Yeah. Creeping up again. Um, so going into the altcoins, we have XRP at $0.50, cents, uh, Cardano at $0.43, cents, Solana sold at $34. And Doge, man, Doge is still hanging, hanging in there, man. Barely. It's still barely. there. It's like, still there. It's, like, it's a meme coin. It's not a utility coin. It's not an altcoin. Who's buying it? It's like, I want to know who's, who's buying following? it. That's yeah. what I'm, all the people that bought it at 75, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like, it I'm sorry, guys. I didn't even joke around like that, but. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. It's just, yeah, it's pretty wild how that's a new bottom when, when at the beginning of, what was it, like 2020? 20, 20, the beginning of 2020, yeah. it was in a point in a fraction, so, you know, like point zero zero two. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, anyway, that's it for the top 10, guys. Well, my thought process, too, maybe on this, like some of these other tokens, it's like, oh, I missed my chance for Doge, but now it's lower, so I'll buy a bunch. Like these people, like second, third wave Doge people that, like, think it's going to go back up, kind of like halfway hold the price. Yeah. I don't know. It makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. But then also... Um, there are things happening in the back. I'm sorry. There's also, I'm, I haven't really kept up with it. Or anything, oh, yeah, yeah. As far as what I was seeing, I mean, people are actually buying, like, basketball tickets with it. And, like, mm -hmm. there are in other countries that are using it to get rental yeah. cars and flights and all that stuff. So there's actual usage, but not enough to make it seem like it's going to be, like, yeah. um, substantial enough. There's always way too much stuff going on anyways. Like... Hey, if people like it, we've talked about this tons of times on the podcast. People like it, then people accept it. It's adoptable, right? Like, I don't think it's going to stick around forever, but people like it. And then companies go, oh, this is what people like. So they start taking it. They're not going to take Ethereum or anything like super legitimate, but we'll take Doge because people think it's trendy and cool, right? Um, it's like the same thing with like the Morbius movie. Like they released, Tony released it again or whatever. Because they're like, oh, people love it. It's like, no, people are memeing about it. Yeah, like, 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 like yeah. people don't like yeah. it. It's, it's it's trending today. Yeah, 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 like it's trending in a bad way. Why did you put it in the theater again? Yeah. I mean, not the Doge is that bad. It's just a choice, right? Exactly. But we did have like an interesting conversation about B and B, right? Because I think that it, while it is a centralized exchange token, it's a three hundred dollar token, and it does fuel the market, right? Where you don't see it as much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It it actually has a great utility. I mean, it's like it's the um, in network of a platform of finance, but it also bridges you from have buying you know an an altcoin that's super super like uh, how should I say it? like rug pull potential. Yeah, uh, I don't want to say the other other name, but yeah, uh, it, it enables you to buy that kind of stuff through BNB. Right, and, and then also you have transactions and platforms, right? Like you want to buy Doge, you want to buy Ethereum or Bitcoin. Well, they're going to charge you a transaction fee, right? Well, you can pay BNB and get a small percentage discount, or you can pay with your uh, with your uh, cash. Right, you use. right. Yeah. I I think too, like when you come to decentralized exchange or stuff going on all over the world, right? So you you might have ten thousand or whatever three five thousand on like finances exchange thing where you you know yeah trade your coin or cash for their coin or you take that go on to pancake swap sushi swap there might be a lot of great ones but there's also a lot of rug pull coins uh at least half probably more but like so at that point it's like well you got to make sure you do your diligence really know what you're doing or else yeah so it, i think leo's point is it does fuel that kind of stuff so he sees it a little bit not as legit but it is funding the DeFi space too, so they definitely have like a strong arm in the market in that way, for better or worse, right? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it, it's not it's not legit. I just see it as more as a 
is a stable coin than anything, you know, utility wise. Pure utility. Pure utility. Token. utility token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's how I see it. I don't see it like oh, I'm gonna buy BNB and we're gonna yeah. we're gonna pump it to sure. a thousand. You know what I mean? Sure, like I don't sure. see a pump potential on that or right. massive gains. I mean, it has had massive gains and it has had massive pullback just because the way the market is though. Yeah. Exactly. If you've been around here for long enough, like I don't want to go through again a while the prices are down, the projects are building and doing all this cool stuff. And we'll probably we're gonna to touch on some of the cool like things that the projects are doing still, but like with how bad the finance like whole sector is and the recession, inflation, etc. Like there's no way these prices are appreciating anytime soon. So usually your price is boring. So and that's probably gonna be through twenty twenty three. People say it's usually like a year and a half, so I think it's like early twenty twenty four, something like that. So anyways. Uh, that's my thought. Any thoughts on prices, whatever. Bitcoin, I go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin, I <highlight. laughs> go ahead. Say it. really quick. Uh, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, everything's down. It's like Bitcoin's still worth 20 grand. It's like yeah. almost a new car or a small new car, right? Like, so that's nothing to scoff at. You think, yeah. like, years ago, it was at what 100, 200 bucks, and uh. If that's the lowest possible price, that's amazing. Is that the bottom of the yeah. bottom? Yeah. Like, that's like, that's, that's yeah. the bottom of the bottom, and you know, we're all right. We're all right. Even so, if it's ten thousand, that's yeah, still a lot of yeah. money for yeah. one coin. Like because before the pump started happening, before the pump season, the pre-pump season, and it uh it was like sitting around six, seven grand for a long, a long time. And it was there just like sideways trending. A couple years ago. Uh, yeah, a couple like a few years ago before uh, 2020 came around and then it just started pumping yeah. to hit the 20, okay, hit 27, okay, hit 30, okay. Like 32. Yeah, 32, okay. Back down and, and down. then and really then, went up. And then it went 40. And then once yeah. it hit 40 something, it just didn't stop. It didn't stop. Every day was just a new high, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's what we need to be back at, you know, we need that. At the end of the day, like that's also not sustainable euphoria, you know, like nothing appreciates $10,000 in a couple of days or months, right? Like, yeah. I mean, Hey, like a coin, let's put it really back in perspective and pull this in. If every one coin is worth 10 plus 20 grand, I mean, that's insane. Yeah. Everybody wants it to be a hundred grand, but it's kind of unrealistic, uh, until over time, I, that, that's another thing I was going to talk about. I might as well be talking about Bitcoin right now. Um, is there was like some data and stuff showing that out of the 19,000 coins, like 14 or 15,000 are like locked up basically long term. So there's only like five, 6,000 maybe on mark, you know, on the markets moving mm -hmm. around. And there's only 2,000 because there's 19,000, 21,000 is the max. There's not that many more coming within the next couple of years. This has to go. You know, because only twenty one thousand of those like Bitcoin's like ninety percent bought up. So it's just the issuance only comes out X amount and then you also there's a there's a halving every couple of years and there's gonna be another one in twenty twenty four. So yeah, look at this. Ninety one percent bought up, circulating supply. So it was like nineteen million, you're saying oh, twenty thousand. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. nineteen yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but the point is right, yeah. there's only two million left. Yeah. There's like fourteen, fifteen million that are locked up like long term yeah. that's like what the data is showing so it's like there's not much more for this to stay suppressed over the next couple of years before yeah. it goes you know i understand now yeah yeah, yeah. Sorry. A little bit. yeah no um i get that We're, he was right i messed seen, up on the numbers no no, no it just didn't seem like it seemed very very low and i'm mm -hmm. like wait a minute dude, that's crazy uh 20 so low though. yeah so it's crazy low i'm like yeah and see that's gonna like explode any day now <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. uh no but uh that's another thing dude like when when coins reach their max uh usage or supply yeah, uh capped out capped out it's nothing more in the market it becomes so like scarce that people are willing to buy because they see it appreciating in value yeah and once that happens then you'll get your hundred thousand a coin you know no problem because there's no way you're gonna be able to buy it. Like there's, it's not. There's nothing that's gonna keep suppressing the price down. Exactly. You know, inflating the market, inflating the market. The next it's, bull runner yeah. too are gonna be stupid for this yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like you thought, you thought, yeah, seventy thousand was insane. Like, what if you get, wake up one day and you're like at one twenty? You yeah. Know what I mean? that's then you might wake up and it's one sixty next. <laughs> like, you know, it's not a thousand dollars a lot of the day, right? 
But like realistically, yeah, only so much stuff can be locked up before like the prices just um, appreciate. And also like on that, so we're talking about there's a lot of price suppression. There's a lot of like negativity, but that's also it's a lot of good news in the sense that there's people here. Unknown wallet transfers three billion dollars of Bitcoin linked to an old address. So that's um, 133,000 bitcoins that some you know billionaire bought up because you know a lot of people you know see this long term as like a really good deal. Um, if this stuff was dead, billionaires wouldn't be buying billion bitcoins. You know, I mean that's right, that's, that, right. that's really you know people are thinking long uh, short term. It's all emotional. Oh my gosh, it's down in price. Oh my gosh, everything. You look at the fundamentals. You look at what it's doing. This is people hoarding coins for years. Like yeah. this is not going anywhere. It goes back to it goes Sorry. back. No, you're good. It goes back to uh, rule number one, I believe. Like if you're gonna put money in, like in the thousands, um, and you're not gambling, you're trying to be more uh, educated. And yeah, do your own research. And once you do your own research, you end up in a rabbit hole that leads you to this kind of information. You know, wallets buying all kinds of stuff, transferring kind of like you, you get, you know, billions of dollars transferred on this location now. Now. It says unknown, but it could be a billionaire. It could be uh, a trust, like not yeah. a trust, but like a a fund. An scale, yeah, like BlackRock, whatever. Yeah, big, yeah. Big thing. Yes, and then there was an article that I saw also. I can't remember, but it showed that Grayscale holds the most. I think. Look at that, six hundred eighty-three thousand. Yeah, right there, baby. Yeah, and then also, and then and then I think secondary is um. So you're talking about. <laughs> Oh yeah, so anyway, yeah, so so like when you see transfers like these, it could either be a billionaire, it could be a fund like Grayscale, or it could be a platform, platform moving money around. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. So well, yeah. it actually breaks down right here. Oh, there you go. So we got the OGs, you know, we have the Nakamoto wallet with like a million <laughs> Bitcoin in it, which is ridiculous. But then there's a bunch of like unknown, these all individuals, we got one, two, three, four, five, six or whatever with anywhere from 49,000 to almost 100,000 Bitcoin. And then you have the exchanges of Binance with like 450,000, Bitfinex, oh, wow. Well, I was about to talk about that next. But, um, and then the U.S. Department of Justice, a Bitfinex hack of 93, 94,000. So yeah, and then we get Grayscale with 600K, Block One, you know, all these companies. So pretty interesting. And uh, $3 billion, so it's a lot of money, it's a lot of coins. Oh, yeah. So, any more thoughts on that? I want to be able to spend $3 billion. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the kind of money we're talking about. Um, yeah, seriously. So, no, nah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much what I was trying to say is that right there. Yeah. Like, you have your individuals, you have your exchanges, you have your governments like El Salvador and like mm -hmm. other, other, you know, like Russia. I'm pretty sure a lot of Russian yeah. people put their North money. North Korea, yeah, probably. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. North Korea should be number one at this point. Why wouldn't it be number one when it's free and just taking, every, taking everyone to the cleaners? You know what I mean? Jeez. Um, and then so you have, special. and then you have your your companies like Grayscale, which is like the largest, which I I'll, I guess, but yeah, it it is the largest holder of Bitcoin as far as company wise, like, company wise, yeah, or yeah. trust, if you like, investment trust. Yeah. Well, even if you talk about these, you know, unknown wallets or whatever that had, you know, probably since like two thousand eleven or twelve, when you know Bitcoin was pennies on the dollar, that fifty thousand sounds like a lot. To take it to Grayscale, which is you know six hundred. 50,000 basically. I mean, so I said, oh wow, we're there because I, this is actually something else we're going to touch on. The, the Mt. Cox hack is on here and it had uh, like 80,000 that they're holding at the moment, but they actually, there's like some hysteria and stuff that Mt. Cox got hacked for, I think it was like 133,000 Bitcoin, something like that. One, 130 to 140. Yeah, so so they got hacked, and then there's been this lawsuit going on for years, and this is back. That says 2011. And it was, the point was they got they got hacked, and then um, they were freaking out. It was like, oh, over a hundred thousand coins are going to get dumped on the market. But this stuff is all worth like Bitcoin's like two or four hundred dollars, and now it's worth twenty grand. It's like a lot of these people are longtime believers, and now it's just a dump on the market. How that doesn't make sense. Like somebody who's been holding for almost almost a decade is not going to be just dumping. It's a good deal for them. I'd be holding that stuff forever. Um, 
But I, I just thought that was another interesting thing is the market is like very healthy in that sense where Bitcoin isn't just a pump and dump. It, you know, and a lot of people just see it as a long term like gold like investment, which I think is really awesome. It's like very hard to get something at that level in society. Oh definitely. It's it's like your your fang, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like your Facebook, yeah, uh, Apple, you know, um, Netflix, Google. It's like those uh Amazon um, it's just like those those key blue chip blue chip stock blue chip crypto where you know it, it it's just not gonna go anywhere and it's just an increase in value over year because it is crypto it is you know the stock market as far as like technology wise the cat technology category yeah we're not talking about other stuff like oil and all that other yeah. stuff but just in its own category it is a top dog and that's what that is. Well, I think regulators um, are more favorable to it because it was just sitting on the free market and no one owned it for a long time. Where like, you have venture capitalists and stuff with all these new cryptos that like want to like, oh, we can buy in a bunch at a discount and then we like, you know, can make a lot of money really fast because we own 50% of the supply. It's like digital property where a lot of the other ones are securities and they're like heavily more um, scrutinized, but tax and like all this like, you know. The government could have a harder time with things they label security versus you know, Bitcoin's in a safer asset class, you know, which is a big difference, right? And it's something that people talk about a lot. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't micromanage like 20,000 cryptos, but maybe they're more harsh on, they pick, you know, pick and choose whichever ones they want to go after. And like, if you have heavily invested, then you have problems, right? So, but Bitcoin doesn't have that issue. Um, yeah. So that's a big, that's a big deal that just sat on the free market and nobody was, uh, there's no company that wanted to own or pre-mine or any of that stuff. So, yeah, that's a good that's a good thing. No, that's a great thing. Yeah, and uh, it, it goes back to to people not knowing what it was. Yeah, a lot of people. Like, I mean, you asked me back in 2012, 2014, what Bitcoin was. I'm gonna be like, ah, it's money that it's electronic money. That's all that I was saying. Like, yeah, I didn't know that you had to mine it because there was no you know, Visa MasterCard you know, with their servers and do yeah. transaction logging. Um, I didn't know that, you know, it was used for other things like buying other things or or or, or trading for stable coins. I didn't even know stable coins was a thing. And I think that's another thing too, is like most people don't know that stable coins exist. Yeah. So therefore they automatically think, oh no, if I buy a Bitcoin and it goes up, I could immediately sell it. Right, and, right, and then and then um, I have to get my money out, but then in reality, you can just put it in a stable coin and get back in whenever you're ready again when you see a good entry point. Um, there's a lot of things that people don't know that yeah um, is a state. It makes it safer to invest yeah. in Bitcoin and stuff like that, and I think that that it goes back to you know educating. Well, also like there's banks and there's financial you know systems in place that people go so who owns it and that's a legitimate question if you it's such a different way of thinking about things sometimes you got to have that conversation multiple times because most people have never there's nothing else that's that decentralized that they can equate their brain to it's like a whole new thing they have to learn so it's yeah. a lot of hoops and barriers you go oh it's a scam oh who's going to what company's going to come and take all my money well nobody owns it that's the point and some people will never even understand that concept you know it's like well no somebody owns this house somebody owns the land somebody bitcoin's not like that so it's very very different and you know oh i own a house in the u.s or a car or anything it's like well it's not a global currency or implications running and buy and sell easily right over a system and no one's in charge to screw it up or anything it's just the miners validating so it's very different so i can understand why people have a lot of questions i mean my first thing was oh that that doesn't make sense because there's nothing like it and I think if we do really move the world towards uh, decentralization, then I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, some of it will happen. We'll see. I mean, even if it's like 5%, I think that's cool. But... All right, moving on. Yeah.